Hello, hello. Welcome to Actors Daily Bread. This is episode 39. Today I'm talking about booking the room, how to book the room. I uh, want to say welcome if you're watching the replay. What's up? What's up, replay watchers? Still here in Miami. I'll be here for the next five days. So um thought I'd take full use of this sun shining in my eyes. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been thinking about just wanting to share with you about booking the room. If this is your first time watching Actors Daily Bread, I want to say welcome. My name is Christine Horn. I'm a professional actress of 20 plus years, and I'm a life and career coach for actors. So sometimes it's acting tips, audition tips, life tips, coping tips. And if you're not part of the Actors Daily Bread group on Facebook, come and join us where I do exclusive trainings just for my community. But today I'm talking about how to book the room. And this kind of goes hand in hand with... Um, kind of dealing with rejection. I uh, know rejection is a hard one to, um, rejection is hard for people to deal with. It's hard for people, it's hard for actors to deal with. You know, you audition for a role. If you're lucky to get an audition, you wanna book it. Um, and it's hard when you don't get it. But my, my tip and what has kept me sane, what has kept me, um, in the game and not wanting to give up. There are def definitely days where it's harder than others, but when you walk into an audition knowing that your goal is not just to book that one job, but to book the room, it changes your whole paradigm. And so I wanna to talk to you today about shifting your paradigm about auditions and what success means and what success looks like. So of course, I'm not gonna make light, of course you want to book the job whatever job you are going in for, right? But I need you to understand the importance of making fans out of the casting office that you're visiting or making fans out of the casting office that you are auditioning for. So many times we get so wrapped up in wanting to book a single job, we lose sight of the big picture, which is making a fan, I'm saying fan, out of the casting office. I can't tell you how many gigs, I mean, I've lost track over the years of gig, of jobs I didn't book. At the end of the day, only one person can get the job. That's what it is. It doesn't mean you're any less talented. There's so many factors that come into play for you not booking a role. And what's most important to me, and whenever I finish an audition, I call my husband, I'm like, I said, I don't know. I said, I feel good. I felt good about it. And I booked the room. Like, that's what I say. I booked the room. Because that's what's most important to me. There are casting directors who know me, who have known me for years and years, certainly, especially in the Southeast, who just know me. I'm on their short list to call. As I get back familiar with L.A., that's happening as I'm here in L.A. Well, not here in Miami, but here in L.A., there in L.A. But there are people who I've, I, they're fans of mine. And I may have booked some things with them and then some things I just wasn't right for, or I came down to the wire. It was down to me and one other person. Maybe I was too tall, too short, too dark, too pretty, too ugly. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is you want to just show up, whether you're on tape, whether you're in person, you want to show up, do the best you can do with the, with the time and the material that you've been given, and let them see who you are. Let them see the skill that you can bring, not just to that gig, but to any gig that they may have. And I am a living testimony that this ha has happened for me time and time again. I get calls to audition for stuff, and sometimes I get direct bookings because I have made a fan out of a casting office. And they say, oh, Christine, I know she can do that. So, yeah, we weren't able to book her in those last two jobs because of whatever reason, but we love her. We're going to keep calling her in. So I want to put that on you, too. And I want to say welcome. Give me some hearts and thumbs up if you're watching this. Let me know you're watching. This is Actors Daily Bread. Today, I'm talking about booking the room, not just booking the job. And there have been many times where, of course, it's a job you really want. And you're, you know, I want to just, I guess what I'm trying to say to you today is I want you to stop beating yourself up about things. I want you to stop beating yourself up because you didn't book something. I want you to stop equating your success to roles that you book. Because if you only attach success and being a great actor to how many jobs you book, it's gonna it's it's not gonna balance out most times. There have been years that I've gone without booking things 
where I was in a weird age range or my look that I was working with was was weird. Hey, Kanisha, Kanisha says, yes, say, yes, say it. Thanks, Christine. Thanks for watching, Kanisha. Um, there have been many times where I've been in that middle ground. And so, but I never let the fact that I wasn't booking for it three, six months for this chunk of time make me think that I was any less of an actor, any less of a performer. I've wanted to be an actor since I was a child for as long as I can remember. And no one, no one person, no one gig can tell me that that's not what I was meant to do. It just meant that wasn't my gig. No one can take what is for you. That is a fact. No one can take what is for you. And so I just want to re reiterate to you that your goal is to book the room always. Forget booking the job. I want you to take that out of the picture. I want you, the next audition you have, whether it's on tape or in person, your job is to win over the people in that room. And the way you do that is by bringing your best self forward, which means being, being prepared, being on time, being off book, killing it, doing your work, getting coaching, doing scene study, breaking down the scene, having good headshots, all of that. Because this is what happens. There are times I have two auditions today. I'm in this hotel room and I had to, I taped an audition yesterday and you don't, I'm going to share with you. I can't share it. on. Can I share it? Let's see if you can see it. I had the most rickety, <laughs> the most rickety setup. Hold on. I'm going to get, I don't even know if you're going to be able to see this picture. I'm going to try to show you. Let's see if you can see this. Oops. Can you see that? I know the sun is there. That is a, that's a, um, ooh, it went away. <laughs> I was just trying, basically I had a chair and then I had a, a, a table and then I had a, the, the waste paper basket and then I had a box and then I had my laptop and then I took the lampshade off the lights and moved them all around. I just tore this whole hotel room up. Why? Because I wanted to get this audition and I was requested for something at the last minute by a casting director who knows, likes, and trusts me. And that's your goal when I'm saying book the room. A lot of times casting directors, especially for television shows, television shows happen very last minute. They may write in a brand new character right now. It's 7.04 p.m. Eastern time. They may write in a new character tonight. And you, I may get an email from casting or from my agent saying they need you on tape tomorrow because this role shoots on Thursday. It happens that quick on TV. Film is much slower. It's a slower process. So for film, you got TV, you got to be ready to go. But when it's that short notice, casting directors are not going to call actors who they don't know, like, and trust. Because they can't have you making them look foolish in front of the producers and the directors. If they know they only have 24 hours to turn around a role, they're going to call their top 10, their top 20, who they know always deliver. So even when in times where I have not booked a gig from a certain casting office, maybe 10 times in a row, the fact that they keep calling me in is your first clue. So that's your goal. Get called in more than once. What good is being called in for your ideal casting office, and they never call you back because you sucked, right? So you wanna be on that short list. Being on the short list means they trust you, they know you, they like you, they know your work is great, they know exactly where you would fit in at any given time, and even if you're not right for that role for whatever reason, they know it's only a matter of time before you get called back in for something else, and they keep pushing you. I have an audition to take tomorrow, I just bought a new selfie lamp. Have you heard of those uh, selfie things? I bought one. It's going to be delivered to the hotel tomorrow. So I'm going to test it out like, you know, guys know how it is. Because um, I figured I could take it to my tape it to my phone or my laptop. But I have an audition for a show that I've read for at least 10 times. I think back in the day, there was a show called Army Wives. You guys remember that show on Lifetime? I think I read for Army Wives, no lie, over 20 times. And I never booked it. I never booked it. But the casting office who did that show at the time, I'm, they're a fan of mine. I'm a fan of theirs. And they have called me in for so many things and I've booked so many other things with them. So I want, I don't, I'm going to wrap up, but I don't want you to be discouraged. That's my whole point. Go in to book the room. Stop living this short-sighted, stop approaching with a short-sighted goal of only booking that one job. i rather book the room Get, become friends with the casting directors. Let them know that they can count on me. 
And then from there, whenever something even re resembling something that could fit Christine pops up, they're going to call me. And that for me is how you keep a long, a, a long career. A lot of times my clients and my people in my Actors Daily Bread community will ask, how do you sustain longevity and how, you can, how do you consistently get work? And it's that way. This is my secret. I'm sharing with you. This is gold. The secret is to book the room. Don't worry about the one gig. I hope that helps. I talk about all this and more and give all kinds of amazing tips. I have an upcoming co-star virtual intensive. It's you and me and a small group of actors for five hours on Saturday, June 3rd from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. I have 11 spots left, no, 10 spots left. And I'm gonna put the link once this replay is done, once this uh, video is done, I'll put the replay, uh, I'll put the link so you can check it out. But this is an opportunity, this is just a taste of the stuff that I go in detail with once you actually work with me um, privately or with um, in a small group. So I'm always happy to share. I'm going to, I don't know, I think I'm gonna go sip out of water. <laughs> Why not, right? But I didn't wanna make, I wanted to make sure this day didn't pass without um, me checking in with you. So have an amazing day and keep remembering to book the room. And you can only do that by doing the work that you know you're supposed to do. All right, good night, see you tomorrow, bye.